Okay, here we're going to look at my new Z Pro Tango TA300 inflatable canoe. I was looking for an inflatable uh, to do some uh, canals and rivers by myself mainly, uh, combined with stealth camping, but also with my two young daughters just for a leisurely afternoon out. I wanted something that was lightweight, easy to transport, easy to portage, uh, and for stealth camping purposes, uh, something that if necessary I could deflate and uh, hide away. Uh, I already own a Sevi Law Amazon, which is apparently a, a two-man canoe. Although, like everything else, it's you wouldn't get two adults in there. Maybe one adult and child, or myself and a small amount of kit. But I needed uh, more room, so I upgraded to this. I was looking at the Colorado to begin with, the Sevi Law Colorado, but I was pointed in the direction. Colorado is a two-seater anyway, but I was pointing in the direction of this, and I was so glad I did. After looking at the reviews, <coughs> I decided to uh, jump in and buy one. So here we go. First of all, we're going to look at uh, some specifications as we go along. I wanted to see what, how easy it was to uh, uh, to inflate and deflate, and also how uh, how easy it would be to carry. This is the first time I've unboxed it, uh, so you see my first ever uh, deboxing of it. Now, as for weight versus the Colorado, which is the two-seater. Um, the two-seater weighs in, the Colorado weighs in at sort of 14.5 kilograms, and this weighs in at 18 kilograms, so it's slightly heavier, but it is a, a three-man canoe, or albeit a two adults and a child in all reality. Maximum payload for the Colorado is 440 pounds, that's 199 kilograms, uh, whereas this one is 250 kilograms, so it'll actually take more weight. Handy for put in uh, outboard with a side rigger on there or carry more kit. The Colorado is 10 foot 6 in length and uh, this particular one is 13 foot 6 so it's quite a bit longer. Beam is the same on both of them. Where it does differ is the Tango TA300 is very heavy duty. Um, the sides and the top are made of 850 denier fabric and the all around the base is a thousand denier so it's a much stronger fabric just a question of rolling it out Now I did obtain a deal when I've got this and I got the stirrup pump and some paddles with it. But uh, the stirrup pump, as we'll see in this video, wasn't a lot of cop to be honest. My my other stirrup pump I use, which is a Sevilor branded product, is uh, much better. Inflates in a third of the time. You need far fewer strokes. I calculated that uh, with my Tango stirrup pump 40 strokes filled one side bladder, 40 strokes for the other, and around about 30 strokes for the uh, for the floor. That's to get it up to pressure, so it wasn't too difficult pumping it up. As you'll see in the video, the Sevi Law comes with Boston floor valves, so they're very good quality valves. You've got a removable directional skeg. Uh, you've got a spray skirt front and rear. The three seats are very good quality. They've got very good lumbar support, which my uh, Sevilor Amazon doesn't have. They're inflatable seats and they're very, you end up lying back in your canoe and they're not very comfortable to sit in. This also comes with a pressure gauge, so once you have inflated, you can uh, you can really get your, your pressure spot on. The carrying bag you've seen comes with a repair kit. I've also bought myself uh, a 45 pound thrust outboard with uh, a leisure battery and uh, a little side ringing kit for, for mounting the arc board on the back. Now that with a leisure battery with my kit and with uh, 
two daughters on board are still safely within the the maximum capacity which is 250 kilograms so as far as weight is concerned this is uh, this can handle everything I throw at it now I've had the outboard on yesterday uh, whilst it was perched on top of my uh, trailer and what I will do is I'll extend uh, my power cable from the outboard to the battery so I can put the battery up front to offset the weight at the back of it obviously it may be a different uh, different scenario when I put it in the water but I will edit through some of this to save boring you with the pumping So there we go, inflation's complete. Now you can use a battery operated pump to get uh, a lot of the air in there, but it's so few strokes to do this that it's hardly worth it. Very lightweight. There's the reinforced hull and underside. They've got those two small I don't know what they call their type of skegs aren't they front and back and then the larger skeg simply clips into the back however after reading the instructions you need to partially inflate the floor then fit your skeg on and then finish the inflation of the floor because the the inflation does hold uh, that skeg in place so whilst I could have uh, forced it on there I decided not to And again, on uh, canals, you're not going to need the skeg attached at all. You only really need it if you're on sea or river to give yourself the extra stability. Plenty of width in that. You're looking at uh, three foot two inches, I think, width-wise, compared to the Colorado's three foot three inch. But unlike the Colorado, the, the width is sort of uh, almost all the way down. It, it's measured at its widest point, but uh, the Colorado is more concave, so the width, maximum width, drops off pretty quickly because of the less length. And when you're sat in there, you, you do feel as if you have buckets of room. The seats themselves were very good quality, certainly compared to my Sevilor Amazon, which is, uh, is not in the same ballpark as, uh, as this product, I know, but uh, very substantial uh, zips on them. You can totally detach the back. And they were very solid once I figured out how to put them. I mean, they're pretty easy to, to, to clip in, but... Uh, and adjust. Obviously you can have uh, one, two or three seats put in. So there we go with just the seat in the rear position. I hadn't managed to adjust it properly at that point but that I envisage to use it most of the time so there's plenty of room for kit up front and you can uh, you can hide things under the spray deck front and rear so no lack of room in this. As you can see with the three feet, uh, three feet, three seats in, I'm a little bit uh, sort of bent knees at the back. Although the seats are fully adjustable, I just randomly put those in. So for my little ones, my little daughter, for example, I'd probably. Okay, so here's a closer look. Quite a bit forward. As you can see, the valves on here, I forget what they're called, but they're good quality valves. We've got a cover for the rear valve. Numerous anchor points. Um, initially I set it up wrong because we've got 
two sets of clips on the seat, bottom and top. And in order to stop the backrest leaning back further, you clip them both to the front. Now they're velcroed down so they are fully adjustable for moving forward and backwards. This has 800 denier fabric to the top and sides and 1000 denier to the bottom, so it's one of the most robust inflatables out there. I was looking at the Sevillore um, Colorado initially. Um, I very nearly committed to it until somebody pointed me in the direction of the Tango. And it is a stronger, more robust canoe from what I can see. Hardly any difference in weight. The seats are quite a bit more substantial than the ones that I have on my little Amazon, my Sevillor Amazon, which are inflatable and a pain in the butt to be honest. Okay, well I've just read the instructions with regards to the uh, Boston um, valves and the pressure valve. It comes with three attachments too, so you can use it for other products. This is for the Boston valve and it's actually incredibly easy. According to the instructions, this is the side bladders are inflated to 1.45 PSI or 0 0.1 millibar. Now all you do, <coughs> if you can see this, <coughs> is to just put it in and that's it. You can see the middle needle move. If you want to let some air out, just you can hear it deflating, just lift it out a bit until you get your 1.45. That's undeflated there, obviously. Probably be easier to do on the side. Once you've initially inflated it, you could let some air out and put some more air in as you need to. So, that's pretty okay, cool. Once. This is the first time I've inflated it and deflated it. I'm going to time how long it takes to put it away. Six minutes, 55 seconds. The only criticism I would have is uh, the bag itself. It would be great if the zips were on either end so you could work it in. But uh, it wasn't too bad for a first go. Flatten it. I did try and uh, deflate the air out of it, but it just didn't seem necessary. It wasn't getting any air out. Just by taking the, the valves out, just almost all the air came out of it, so I'm very impressed with that. I'll probably do a better job packing it away next time, but hell, it's alright for a first go. So there you go, you're looking seven minutes to pack away. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Next video is on the water.